Uh, Why do we get angry? Uh, I suppose I get angry when someone does something that is wrong in my eyes, uh, when they do something that I don't want them to do. That's when I get angry. Uh, And sometimes my anger is right. Uh, But more often than not, and I'm thinking about myself here, more often than not, my anger crosses a boundary and it becomes ugly and destructive and resentful. And that is even before I open my mouth. That's what's going on in my mind when I'm ranting at someone in the shower. Uh, Jonah was very, very, very angry. Uh, Chapter 4, verse 1. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong and he became angry. Uh, Literally, the scholars tell us that uh, literally in the Hebrew, we're told it says, it was exceedingly evil to Jonah and he became angry. Uh, In Jonah's view, God had done something exceedingly evil. God was evil in Jonah's eyes. (laughs) What, What had he done? What had God done? Well, back in chapter one, God had said, I need you to go to the Ninevites, if you remember. I need you to go to the Ninevites, a wicked evil, violent people. Jonah, I need you to tell them they are going the wrong way and they are facing my fierce anger. Well, as we know, Jonah refused to go to Nineveh. Jonah instead went in completely the opposite direction. Jonah boards a ship to Tarshish, which is as far away from Nineveh as Jonah can imagine. But we know the story, God sends a storm to disturb Jonah's flight. Uh, Jonah goes overboard and God miraculously sends a fish to rescue Jonah. Jonah repents. Jonah does a U-turn, a U-turn literally in terms of geographical direction, but more importantly, a U-turn in terms of his attitude towards God. Uh, Jonah goes to Nineveh, he preaches to them. Uh, The people realise their wickedness, they cry to God, God is gracious and compassionate, and he does not bring the disaster they deserve, and Jonah is... Furious. Jonah is furious at God's kindness. Chapter 4, verse 1. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is why, uh, that is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you're a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better better for me to die than to live. We now understand more fully why Jonah disobeyed God in chapter 1. We now understand what was more important to Jonah than obeying God, what captured Activated him so much as to cause him to defy God. What was it? It was his hatred of the Ninevites. My first heading God's compassion is more wide than Jonah wanted it to be. The Ninevites were a wicked, evil people who had done horrendous things, and yet God was willing to forgive them. And if we think about it carefully, if we think about it deeply, that does seem wrong to us too, doesn't it? Just to be clear about what the message of the gospel is, to those who 
cry to the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and faith, he instantly and permanently wipes the slate clean and promises that they will have not an eternity in hell where they deserve, they will have an eternity in paradise. But we think that message clearly can't be for everyone because there are people who do things that are beyond wicked. Uh, You know where my wife Sarah works. Uh, It would be wrong to hold out the hope of eternal forgiveness to someone who is unforgivable. So, So how should she approach those involved in child sex rings, those who have killed their children, those who have been convicted of terrorism. You you, you see the question, what category of person is excluded from the offer of complete forgiveness? Uh, How wicked does someone need to have been to render them too wicked? And the shocking answer of Jonah, the the shocking answer that Jonah could not cope with, the answer that he thought was just plain evil, was that no one is excluded from the offer of God's mercy. Not even the brutally wicked and extraordinarily powerful Ninevites who were a very real threat even to the existence of Israel, God's people. And Jonah couldn't cope with that. Uh, Some years ago, someone did something to a member of my family uh, that was beyond despicable and the hurt and damage that they caused was permanent just as an aside what did I think of that person Um, did I want that person dead oh yeah I squirm when I recall some of the things I thought at the time Does that make me a murderer in Jesus' eyes? Oh, yes. You've got a murderer standing in front of you. And then what happened? They became a Christian. All they had done, instantly forgiven. And how did I feel? Jonah 4, verse 1, but to Jonah this seemed very wrong and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life. It's better for me to die than to live. Lord, if this is the sort of God you are who forgives people like this, you might as well kill me now. A few weeks ago, we looked at Jesus' parables. We looked at his parable of the lost son, sometimes called the prodigal son. You remember the story? Younger son wishes his father dead, causes him to sell up the estate, leaves home, squanders the lot, comes back... And dad killed the fatted calf for him. And the elder son is Jonah furious. Elder son cannot cope with his father's generosity and mercy. Father, if that is the sort of person you are, I'm not coming in your house. God's compassion is more wide than Jonah wanted it to be. 
Uh, And secondly, Jonah's anger is more telling than Jonah realised it to be. Jonah is very, very, very angry. Jonah thinks that God has done something evil. So the God who is able to control the wind and the rain and the storm and even the giant fish in the sea, uh, the God who is able to win the hearts of those pagan sailors, the God who is able to win the hearts of those wicked Ninevites, this God is also able to grow a little tree. Verse 5, Jonah had gone out. And sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head, to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy. Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it will be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about this plant? It is, he said, I'm so angry, I wish I were dead. Uh, Jonah is still holding out on the hope that God will destroy those Ninevites as they uh, deserve. So he sets up his, his deck chair outside the city, waiting for God to rain down judgment on them. What is God going to do now? Well, God yet again provides for Jonah. Jonah. But this time, it is not an unsettling storm and a rescuing fish. No, this time, it is a rescuing plant and an unsettling worm. Uh, Jonah is very happy. Jonah is feeling the heat. I think in every sense, Jonah is feeling the heat. And so God, in his kindness, sends a plant to grow. And that changes everything. Uh, All of a sudden, the world is a better place for Jonah. Jonah now has his his little plant, which makes him feel comfortable and happy and and shaded. Gosh, he loves this plant. He loves this plant. How do we know he loves his plant? Well, we know he loved this plant because of what happens next. Next. Uh, God provides a worm that takes away the plant. And once again, Jonah is furious with God. How, How dare God take away his plant? How dare God disturb his comfort? How dare God? But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about this plant? It is, he said. I'm so angry I wish I were dead. I would rather die than lose this plant. This plant is everything to me. Without this plant, my life is, my, my life is just not worth living. I wish I were dead. Uh, toys out of the pram stuff, we think to ourselves. Bit dramatic. But isn't this a snapshot of Jonah's life? Isn't this a snapshot of, of Jonah? Uh, Jonah was a, a prophet called to speak God's message to people. Fine, whilst God gave him a nice message in a nice environment. But once God took away that comforting message and that comforting environment, go to your enemies in Nineveh, I'd rather die than go to Nineveh. I'd rather jump over the side of a boat in a storm than go to Nineveh. And even after being rescued, yes, yes, he preached to Nineveh, but it seems that his heart wasn't in it. Because he didn't actually want the Ninevites to turn 
and receive God's mercy? I found this a deeply challenging story this week. I've spent many more hours on it than, than I had. What has God given to me that if he were to take away, my toys would come out of the pram? What, what do I have that I cherish even more than life itself? No, 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 even more than eternal life. For Jonah, it was comfort and hatred and knowing better than God. Anger is such a revealing thing, isn't it? When I get angry, even in my mind, never mind the words and actions, when I get angry, what deep down is threatened is it my love of comfort or my love of my personal reputation something's happened what are people going to think of me is it my love of being in control that's been threatened is it my love of things being done my way that is threatened or is it my love of my love of looking down on people my love of hating people God takes away Jonah's comfort, he takes away his shade, he takes away his moment of happiness. And so what will Jonah do now? Will he trust God to shade him in another way? Will he trust God to provide another plant? Will he trust God to... No, he'll be angry. You've heard me say this before, but when we are squeezed, what comes out of us is telling. It does reveal who we are. And God does periodically squeeze us. Presumably that is because that is the best way of showing us what's truly inside us. And what comes out tells a story. God's compassion is more wide than Jonah wanted it to be. Jonah's anger is more telling than Jonah realised it to be. Verse 10, but the Lord said, you've been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and also many animals? Jonah, would you just look in the mirror for a moment? You're angry that I should destroy a plant, but you would be delighted if I destroyed tens of thousands of people. Okay, Jonah, what if, what if you were the plant owner? What if you were the gardener and you had lovingly nurtured it? Yes, I could see why you would be angry then, but as it is, this plant is merely something you are using for your own comfort. But I am the owner of Nineveh. Of course I'm the owner of Nineveh. I made Nineveh. I planned Nineveh. I planned every single person in that city since before the beginning of time. Every single one of them and their animals for that matter. And yes, they have offended me by their wickedness, but you want to destroy them? Why do you love a plant more than 120,000 people, Jonah? Oh yes, sorry, it's because it provides a bit of temporary shade for your comfort. Me giving you a plant, me taking away that plant, has shown you exactly what is important to you, exactly who is important to you. Your hatred of the Ninevites, your own comfort and security, that is what is more important to you. God's compassion is more wide 
than Jonah wanted it to be. Jonah's anger is more telling than Jonah realised it to be. And there the book of Jonah ends. Uh, What will Jonah do? Uh, Will he again do what he did in the depths of the sea? Will he again repent, do a U-turn in his attitude towards God? Will he again cry for forgiveness? Uh, Will he do what those sailors did who turned from their system of beliefs in their non-gods and start believing in the living God? Uh, Will he do what the Ninevites did to turn from their wickedness? Uh, What will Jonah do? And the answer is, we do not know what Jonah did. Uh, Why would the author of this book leave us with such a cliffhanger? Because he is asking us to answer the same questions for ourselves. God's compassion is more wide than I want it to be. He extends his mercy to those who have done even some of the things that I mentioned earlier. The question I ask myself, will I crave his compassion for others, even for those who have done terrible things to people I love? that line in the Lord's Prayer that I wish wasn't there. Do you know the one? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. God's compassion is more wide than I want it to be. And my periodic anger, my angry thoughts... My angry rants to myself when I'm walking the dog about. They are more telling than I realise. They reveal the things I cherish more than God. They reveal my godless attitudes. They reveal my lack of trust in God. Don't they? My anger is more telling than I realise it to be. But smile, please, because I have a final heading. God's rescue is more comprehensive than Jonah saw it to be. Uh, What Jonah did not know, but we know, is that 750 years later, God would show his love, not just for Jonah, not just for the Ninevites, but for the whole world. And so he would send not a fish, he would send his son, Jesus. With the promise that if you have done anything, you can cry to him in repentance for mercy. And he will pay the penalty for every vile thing you have ever thought or have ever done or get this or ever will do. And he will, in a way that we cannot really imagine, he will right all the wrongs in the lives of your victims. He will then come and live within you to disciple you, to reveal to you the state that you are in, the mess within, to change you. God's rescue is more comprehensive than Jonah saw it to be. The book of Jonah. God's compassion is more wide than Jonah wanted it to be. And if I am honest, it is wider than I want it to be. I need God to enlarge my heart significantly. Who in my family have I given up on? Who in my workplace do I just simply avoid? Who in our church family here am I constantly looking down on because of what they do? 
And Jonah's anger is more telling than Jonah realised it to be. And my periodic angry thoughts are more telling than I realise. What does rattle me? And what does that tell me about my misplaced values and priorities? What does that tell me about my lack of trust in God? God's rescue is more comprehensive than Jonah saw it to be. It is more comprehensive than I see it to be. And so what do I do? I turn back to the Lord Jesus yet again. I cry to him with that psalmist, search me, know me, try me, test me, and lead me in the way everlasting.